conceptualizing my place in the world, it's, it's always been in the forest. It's a place that, that, that you become so intertwined with that, you know, no matter where you go, you think about it. And you think about comparing it to, to this place. And it's hard to describe. It's, uh, I guess it just becomes a real part of you to a point where you can't really live without it. I think I like that one and that one. Cutting trees by hand, even with a chainsaw, it's a pretty big rush. Whether you live or die is entirely up to your skill. For one minute second, you are master of gravity. I was raised to run around these hills. The fear of losing that connection, the fear of losing that ability to access the place is really what drives me. Hopefully if the smelts are here, that means the salmon are here. Everybody should be here, we should have a good party. It gets shallow quick. Part of sort of where we're at with the environmental movement, I think, is coming to terms with the fact that we're not, we're not othered from these places or othered from nature. We're, we're a part of them. And to, to conceptualize us as anything different is to put them in a glass box that almost makes them more fragile. We find ourselves in the midst of, you know, a ginormous crisis that, that we've put ourselves in, and that's climate change. Central to our ability to adapt to climate change, respond to climate change, is the role of our forests. We're the most forested state in the United States, 90% forested. It's the number one asset that Maine has that, that places us on, on a global stage. Yeah, but I mean, just look at the spruce regen. Oh, here. I know, there's little poppers everywhere. The whole place is just plastic. You start looking around, they're popping up through the snow everywhere. So when you let the sun in here, well, boom, these things are gonna take off. As conservationists, you know, we don't, we're not real big on planting. I mean, we wanna use natural regeneration like that because that's the genetics from this place. Steve is one of the sharpest young guys I've ever came across. I did this for a lot of years, and I met three or four guys that were really sharp, and Steve is one of them. Right there? Yeah, along the brook that's there. showing right along the brook is mature wood right there. Right. I mean, right. good sized stuff. The basis of our whole operation is that if the ecology is right, then the economics over the long term will work. And we mean that in a holistic way. Hardwood and then the height classes 4D over tolerant, tolerant hardwood. You know, there's no other forest like this left in the eastern United States. This is it. And it's the forest for 75 million people. You know, none of us can flip a switch overnight and make the type of monumental change that's really needed. But I think 
if each of us push our own little switch, then eventually all those switches will flip to on. And then you've got some change. 